the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been an impressive hit among comic fans for over a decade. While Marvel comics have been around for 60 plus years, now that is a long time with a lot of material ripe for adapting. However, stories from the 1960s onwards will likely have some elements that are more than a little outdated and in need of some rejigging to fit properly on a film. The MCU has walked a very fine line when it comes to balancing their films with a mix of original storylines for the casual moviegoers and also ones based on classic stories from the comics for the longtime fans. For those diehard comic fans, you'll know there are some large deviations the MCU has taken from the comics, some alter the whole core of a story, while others simply change aspects of a character. In either case, it is an interesting task to compare the original source material to what has ended up on the big screen. In Age of Ultron, through a combination of Tony and Bruce and the Jarvis AI, Ultron is created, an AI that goes rampant and nearly destroys the whole world. In the comics, it is original Ant-Man and the Avenger Hank Pym, who is the sole creator of Ultron, this creates an everlasting relationship between Pym and Ultron that transcends into various other characters and stories. The introduction of Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver vary greatly between the MCU and the comics. However, at the time, the changes made to the characters were somewhat required. In the comics, Wanda and Pietro are twins and the children of X-Men baddie Magneto. As the MCU originally didn't have the rights to the X-Men, the film couldn't make mention of anything mutant related and so the characters were changed to not be mutants but successful experimental subjects empowered by Loki's staff. Another character who has significantly changed is the archenemy of Iron Man, the Mandarin. In the comics, he is a genius scientist, also adept at martial arts, and is powered by 10 magical rings that help him fight the old shellhead. In Iron Man 3, the Mandarin was actually just a fictional character portrayed by a drunk Englishman. Nothing close to the classic comic book villain, this one looks like it is going to be corrected in the upcoming Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. While the Civil War event is fairly similar in both the comic books and the MCU, a significant difference is the stakes that were involved. While both conflicts centered around the superhero signing up with the government for some added accountability, in the comics, the big issue was forcing all the masked heroes to register with the government and surrender their secret identities thereby potentially putting themselves and their loved ones in danger. In the MCU, where almost all heroes have public identities, this high-stake component was lacking. Nick Fury of the Howling Commandos and later Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. is an important character in both the MCU and Marvel comics, but if you already didn't know, there is one big difference from the one in the comics and the one in the MCU. The character is originally white in the comics, whereas in the MCU, he is African American, played by Samuel L. Jackson. What is most interesting is in the Ultimate Universe, Fury is drawn to look exactly like Jackson, and Jackson only agreed to that on the basis that if the character ever made it to film, that he would be able to play him. Turned out very well indeed. In Avengers Infinity War, we see Thor create a new hammer for himself. After Mjolnir is destroyed, he creates this new hammer, Stormbreaker, through a cosmic blacksmithing job. However, in the comics, Thor's big Thanos ending weapon had a completely different origin. There, the hammer is commissioned by Odin to give to Beta Ray Bill, a Corbinite cyborg who is deemed worthy enough to wield an Asgardian made weapon after he was able to pick up Mjolnir. Thanos' whole motivation for acquiring the Infinity Stones and Gauntlet is also very different between film and the comics. In the MCU, Thanos plans to wipe out half of all life because the universe has only a limited amount of resources and cannot sustain current populations. In the comics, Thanos was in love with death, like an actual woman 
Kuro presented the concept of death, but she kept friend zoning him. So Thanos tries over and over again to impress her, which eventually means killing endless amounts of lives with the Infinity Stones. In the comics, Zemo is a classic Avenger and Captain America villain. He is known for his purple mask, his ties to World War II, and his often extravagant plans for taking over the world, which often include time-traveling hijinks. In the MCU's Captain America Civil War, the villain Zemo is very sympathetic. He is basically just a normal guy out to get revenge for the demise of his family in Sokovia. In the MCU, Killmonger and T'Challa are very much intertwined as Killmonger's dad was a Wakandan spy operating in the US who eventually betrays Wakanda, forcing T'Challa's dad to kill him. In the comics, Killmonger had no relation to Black Panther was enslaved as a child by Claw and had a super academic background instead of a mercenary one. As any comic nerd will tell you, the MCU Avengers original lineup is very different from that of the comics, unlike the MCU's well-known lineup of Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, Black Widow and Hawkeye, the original comic lineup was only Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Though one of their first team-ups led to the discovery of a frozen Captain America, in the movie, the team comes together to battle a large-scale alien invasion in New York City.